uh, further ado, Pedro, you can take the floor. Hello. Um, so my name is Pedro Mendes, and I'm here to pr present uh, our work uh, entitled Trim Tuner, Efficient Optimization of Machine Learning Jobs in the Cloud via Subsampling. Uh, and first, um, I will uh, motivate our problem, and then I will uh, present the Trim Tuner and uh, evaluate uh, against other state-of-the-art uh, systems. At the end, I will present uh, the current work that we are developing right now and some final remarks. Uh, so, in recent years, uh, we are seeing that uh, machine learning is everywhere. Uh, almost every app, for example, almost every app that we, we use in our smartphone uh, uses and exploits some uh, techniques uh, of machine learning or AI. Oh, and we are seeing that uh, these machine learning models are increasing in their complexity. Uh, and this, uh, this is uh, due to the, the fact that in last years we are seeing that um, uh, we have the, the hardware and we have the power to, to compute and to, to train uh, these complex models. And also um, the data sets, data sets used to train these models are growing larger and larger. Uh, and therefore the training process of these complex models uh, may involve a lot and enormous amounts of computational resources and uh, take a lot of time. And in this context, uh, the cloud can provide um, a good option to, to train uh, these machine learning models because the cloud provides access to almost unlimited uh, on-demand resources. And it offers a large spectrum of virtual machines optimized for different purposes uh, with different types, sizes, and uh, prices. And uh, right now we are seeing this is uh, the standard approach uh, nowadays. So a lot of companies and users are, are deploying their, their models in the cloud and this way they can avoid to, um, to buy and to invest in uh, very expensive hardware. Uh, two years ago, it was present uh, a study about the impact of training uh, some uh, very complex models. And it was estimated the, the footprint uh, that uh, the training phase of these models have. And for example, it was estimated that uh, some of these models uh, would um, spend uh, thousands or hundreds of uh, thousands of dollars uh, to be trained on the cloud. So in, in this context, uh, we have a, a problem, which is uh, which uh, cloud uh, configuration should we use? And also which model hyperparameters uh, should we select uh, in, uh, for a machine learning model? And we, we see that the, the cloud uh, offers a, a, a large spectrum of virtual machines. So the user needs to, to select, uh, the, for example, the number of VMs and the VM type to, to train these models. But also the, um, the models need to be tuned, the hyperparameters need to be select and normally uh, this is a complex optimization problem because uh, there are uh, uh, several hyperparameters to be optimized and they are normally defined over large domains. And uh, using the current uh, models trained over the large data sets uh, is uh, as one problem because testing uh, even a single configuration uh, can be very, very expensive. Uh, it was shown in a, a, a previous work that uh, we we need the the joint optimization of uh, cloud um, uh, 
uh, and uh, parameters and the hyperparameters of the model. So when we we instead of doing joint optimization, you we optimize separately uh, these two parameters. Uh, it was uh, proved that. Uh, we are unable to, to identify the optimal configuration, so the system will recommend suboptimal configurations. And in particular, uh, in the case of the neural networks, it, uh, it spends um, more 3.7 times. Uh, and uh, we, we know that uh, the wrong selection of the, these parameters, the, the cloud and the hyperparameters, uh, may uh, have an a, a important impact and a significant impact uh, in the performance of the model, uh, for example, in the accuracy, and also it amplified the, the costs. Therefore, uh, it is fundamental the job optimization of um, the cloud and application parameters. This creates a, a more complex problem since um, right now the, we have larger search spaces because search spaces is composed by the Cartesian product of the um, model hyperparameters and the cloud parameters. In this context, uh, we present TrimTuner. TrimTuner is a system to optimize uh, the training of machine learning in, uh, jobs in the cloud and it exploits subsampling techniques in order to enhance the efficiency of the optimization process. And uh, so uh, TrimTuner deploys the, the model uh, using subsample data sets, uh, training uh, using uh, less data in order to reduce the training time and therefore the, the costs that the user needs to pay in the cloud. Uh, Trim Tuner also joint optimizes the, the cloud configurations and the hyperparameters of the model. So it, it is able to recommend the optimal configurations. Trim Tuner solves the, the following uh, optimization problem. So it tries to maximize the accuracy of a machine learning model, this A, uh, using a configuration X uh, and the full data set, S equal to one. And uh, the, uh, is subject to uh, a set of uh, user-defined quality of service constraints, for example, a maximum execution time or a maximum cost uh, that the user needs to pay uh, in the cloud. As I previously said, uh, Trim Tuner uh, deploys the, the job, the target model, using subsample data sets in order to reduce the cost of testing uh, each configuration. And then uh, TrimTuner uh, leverage this knowledge gain uh, through these cheaper evaluations and built, uh, built predictive models and these models uh, keep into account how shifts of the data set size affect the accuracy, the cost, and the constraints of the target job. In order to solve the optimization problem, um, TrimTuner leverages uh, Bayesian optimization. Bayesian optimization is a te technique that allows us to um, to solve optimization problems. And uh, we need to construct um, and update the, the model about the objective function to optimize. And it, we, it also uh, uses a, a, a heuristic called an excision function in order to select the next configuration to evaluate. TrimTuner does not assume any a priori knowledge about the target job and the target uh, and the training platform. So it is completely uh, independent about the, the, the model or the job that is being optimized. So uh, what is the, the goal of the Bayesian optimization? So uh, Bayesian optimization aims at uh, identifying the optimum of a black box function that is normally very expensive uh, to, um, to evaluate. Uh, it does not assume any a priori knowledge about that uh, objective function. And 
it tries to build and build a, a, a black box um, model of the objective function. The, the algorithm performs uh, as the following. So first, uh, it tests uh, a set of initial configurations uh, chosen at random. And then uh, we can use this uh, knowledge to build the, the model of the objective function. Uh, in the, the third step, we, after we build the model, we can use a, an heuristic called an excision function in order to select the next configuration to evaluate. We can test that configuration and then we update the model. And this loop uh, performs until some stop condition is met, for example, uh, a maximum uh, exploration cost or a maximum number of iterations. Uh, so, as I said, uh, we need to construct the, the model of the objective function. And uh, we see in the literature that the, the standard and the, the most common uh, modeling technique is the Gaussian processes. Um, Gaussian processes, uh, they provide uh, directly um, information about the, the configuration, so the predicted value, the average, but also it provides information uh, the, about the uncertainty uh, of the prediction. So the, the prediction uh, follows a, no, a normal distribution. We have the average and the standard deviation. They are trackable. So we have a, a closed form for Gaussian processes and they are flexible. The, the user uh, can choose the kernel, the covariance function, in order to, to meet some uh, requirements. And uh, Gaussian processes can be used in continuous and discrete uh, spaces. Uh, they have uh, an important drawback, as we are going to see next. Gauss, Gaussian processes, uh, they, they are uh, not very easy to compute, so they, they take a lot of time, especially in the training phase, um, and uh, we, we see, uh, as we are going to see, uh, this will have a, a, an impact in the recommendation times. Alternatively, uh, we can use an assemble. Uh, we, we cannot only use one learner, uh, a simple learner, uh, because this way we don't have any information about the uncertainty of the model. And if we use an assemble of uh, learners, we can... Um, uh, have a prediction about the, the value, the, the average, by determining the average of the prediction of each learner. And we can measure the uncertainty uh, by calculating the, the standard deviation using the predictions of each learner. In particular, in TrimTuner, uh, we exploit uh, an assemble of decision trees. One of the, the most important components of the Bayesian optimization is the, the excision function. So as, as, I, as I previously said, the excision function um, selects the next configuration to, to test. Uh, and uh, it, try, it exploits the model's knowledge and the certainty in order to, to select that configuration. And normally, it, it, uh, the excision function tries uh, balances uh, exploitation versus exploration. So exploitation, uh, it recommends uh, best uh, configurations that are predicted to be better than the, the current one. And exploration, uh, it recommends configurations that are predicted to, to reduce the uncertainty of the model. One of the, the most common uh, excision functions used in the literature, uh, it's uh, called uh, expected improvement. So, and it tries to estimate the, the expected amount by which evaluating the configuration X can improve uh, over the, the current uh, incumbent, the, the current best uh, um, configuration. And for that, we need to integrate over the uh, all values of the distribution, but we are only interested in the regions where uh, the predictions 
the, the predicted value for f is, is uh, higher than the, the value of the incumbent. Uh, there is a, a variant of this uh, exigent function that it's called constrained expected improvement that allow us to, to that extends this exigent function in order to, to incorporate constraints. And it multiplies the, this expected improvement by the probability that the, the constraints are met. Uh, there are a, a lot of um, um, different exigent functions in literature. I will also talk about the entropy search because we are going to, to use the entropy search later. And the entropy search, it tries to estimate the information gain, uh, the information that can be gained about the optimal distribution by evaluating a configuration. And uh, here we can see the, the importance of having a measure for the model's uncertainty. Uh, both these exigent functions uh, use the distribution of the predictions that follows a normal distribution. We have the average value and the, and the standard deviation. And we assume that we have the, the, the knowledge about the model's uncertainty via, via the, these PDFs. Um, and then uh, we have a way to describe the, the uncertainty of the models. So it is important, for example, to the, and we can understand why it's so common to use uh, GPs, Gaussian processes in Bayesian optimization, because we have directly uh, uh, an output uh, that, is, that follows a normal distribution. However, we can also use a, an ensemble, a, as I previously explained. Uh, they, however, these uh, two exigent functions, they also they, they leverage, they use the, the knowledge and the uncertainty, but they use this in different ways. Sorry. Um, however, uh, we have one problem uh, when we are talking about the these complex models that we have nowadays, uh, training uh, with huge amounts of data. Because testing uh, even a single configuration can be very, very expensive. And this problem was tackled uh, in this work uh, called Fabulous that uh, aims to maximize the model accuracy by optimizing the, the hyperparameters of the, the model. And for that, it leverages Bayesian optimization to solve the optimization problem. And the, the, the novel idea in this work uh, was the, the use of subsampling in order to reduce the cost. So the, the fabulous deploys and the evaluates configurations using subsample uh, data sets in order to reduce the, the time and therefore the cost of testing uh, a configuration. And the base idea, uh, when we add the subsampling technique is to, to add an additional dimension to the search space that corresponds to the data set size used to, to test the configuration. So the, the algorithm uh, performs as the following. First, we, we test a, a set of initial configurations X, but we test these configurations in, in all the subsample data sets. So this way we have a, a better, we can have a better idea uh, how, uh, how the accuracy and the, the objective function the function uh, evolves in the data set size dimension. Uh, then it builds a model of the objective function, and uh, it uses then it uses a, an exigent function, but this exigent function selects not only the, the configuration X, but also the data set size S used to that. We, it's going to be used to, to test or to evaluate the configuration. We test that configuration using that uh, data set size. And then uh, we can update the model using this information. And this loop uh, is performed until some stop condition is met. And in Phobos, uh, it was proposed a, a new exigent function called information gain per unit cost. 
So it extends the previous work, um, the entropy search, uh, that uh, tries to estimate the information about the optimal distribution uh, using the full data set. Uh, that can be gained by testing a, a configuration X uh, using a, a subsample data set S. And they normalize it by the cost of testing that configuration. And this way, this acquisition function is able to, to select cheaper configurations that use subsample data sets. However, uh, this uh, uh, system follows has several limitations. So it does not uh, keep into account any uh, quality of service constraints, uh, which is not uh, desirable uh, when we are talking ab uh, about the cloud. So the user uh, is desir it's, it's desirable that the user has, uh, has some way to control the, the cost. Um, uh, Fabulous only optimizes the hyperparameters of the machine learning models. So it, it underlooks the problem of jump optimization. Uh, and we, as we previously seen, so uh, it, it recommends uh, suboptimal configurations. And uh, in particular, it also considers smaller search spaces. And the, the accession function used. Uh, in Fabulous is very expensive to compute. Uh, it's a, a problem uh, of all the accession functions based on the entropy search. And uh, uh, this problem is, uh, is exacerbated uh, when we, we have large search spaces, um, as it is, is in this case. Sorry. Okay, sorry about that. Um, and uh, using the, our data sets that I will present in the evaluation, uh, for example, it took uh, 13 minutes only to recommend the configuration. So in TrimTuner, we tackle all these uh, drawbacks. First, we present a novel acquisition function that keep, uh, keeps into account uh, our shift, um, sorry, uh, can, keeps into account the quality of service constraints. For example, uh, a maximum execution time or a, a maximum cost. It optimizes both the hyperparameters and the cloud uh, resources. So TrimTuner is able to recommend optimal configurations. And in order to reduce the, the training and the, the recommendation times, um, it, uh, it exploits uh, and it uses a lightweighted model based on ensemble of decision trees instead of Gaussian processes. And it also uh, uses a novel filtering heuristic in order to reduce the number of configurations to compute the accession function. And the new accession function extends the previous one uh, using Fabulous by uh, uh, determining the probability that the new predicting incumbent uh, meets the constraints. And for that, uh, we need to, to simulate the model. So uh, we want to predict what is the impact of evaluating XS, uh, the impact of evaluating a configuration uh, in, the, in the future in the, the model. So we simulate the, the models and we retrain the models using the predicted values. So for each, for each configuration, we predict the values. Uh, we, we retrain, uh, update the models and retrain the models using these predicted values. And then we can use simulate, these simulated uh, models to predict uh, what is the new incumbent and at last the probability that this new incumbent meets the constraints. And we multiply uh, this uh, times the accession function of Fabulous that tries to estimate the information gain uh, about the optimal distribution uh, of evaluating a, a configuration. And it normalizes by the cost of testing that configuration. 
However, as, as I previously said, the, the computation of the Fowler's excision function is very expensive. And so we, we in Trink Tuner, we tackle this problem by decreasing the number of configurations uh, for which the excision function is evaluated. And here the, the idea is to uh, filtering out uh, non-promising configurations and we are going only to test the the configurations that are predicted to 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 heal uh, higher values in the excision function and we also rely on an assemble of decision trees instead of Gaussian processes. So in trim tuner uh, we propose the this new filtering heuristic called constraint expected accuracy uh, and the constraint expected accuracy multiplies the predicted accuracy of a configuration uh, by the probability that the constraints are met. And the, the CEA, the constraint expected accuracy, can be seen as a rough but cheap approximation of the excision function. And the, using this uh, filtering heuristic, we can evaluate uh, all the untested configurations and trim tuner ranks the, the untested configurations via the CA. So it's, it only tests the, the best top, uh, the top 10% uh, with the best CA uh, in only test that configurations in the excision function. In terms of the modeling techniques, uh, in trim tuner, uh, we exploit um, both Gaussian processes because it's the, the standard technique used in the, in the literature, in, Bayesian, in the Bayesian optimization li literature, but we, we try to, to overcome the drawbacks of Gaussian processes uh, using an assemble of decision trees. And that, uh, I'm going to evo evaluate uh, both techniques uh, next. Uh, so in the, the, for the, to, to evaluate the trim tuner, we, we compare against Fabulous. Uh, also, uh, we compare uh, against a simple Bayesian optimization using constraint expected improvement. And here, as I previously said, the constraint expected improvement uh, extends the, the excision function, the expected improvement in order to incorporate constraints. Uh, we also compare against uh, Bayesian optimization using constraint expected improvement normal, normalized by the cost and a simple random search. It should be noticed that these uh, last three, uh, they do not uh, uh, exploit subsampling in order to reduce the cost and the time. Our search space is composed approximately of uh, uh, 1400 configurations. And uh, we, to, we create data sets to, to evaluate the systems. And for that, we deploy uh, three different neural networks, a CNN, RNN, and a multi-layer perceptron in the AWS cloud. And, uh, which configuration sh uh, should we consider in our data sets? We have two sets of uh, param parameters, the cloud parameters and the hyperparameters of the model. And uh, for, for the cloud parameters, we consider the VM type and the number of VMs. And for the hyperparameters, we consider the learning rate, the batch size, the training mode, and we have an additional dimension that corresponds to the data set size used to train. Uh, it should be noticed that um, Trim Tuner uh, and this this work can be extended in order to, to incorporate uh, different sets of parameters, uh, both the cloud and hyperparameters. The only thing that the, the user needs to do is to, to add an additional dimension to the search space that corresponds to, to the new parameter to, to be optimized by the system. However, it should be noticed that uh, the the search space grows uh, exponentially uh, with the number of dimensions. So if we have more dimensions, the search space is much uh, larger and the optimization 
problem is uh, much more difficult. So the the complexity of the, the problem increases exponentially too. Uh, we need to, to set uh, different constraints for for the different networks and uh, we set constraints in order to 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 have a search space that only 10 percent of configurations are feasible so they respect the constraint but have an high accuracy so uh, here you can see the the difficulty of the optimization problem because only 10% of the search space is is uh, as interest uh, for for us so uh, it's feasible uh, uh, only 10% of the search space has configurations that are feasible and have a, a, a good enough accuracy in order to to evaluate and compare the, the different optimizers we use the following metric the constraint accuracy so we penalize uh, configurations that uh, are not feasible, that do not uh, uh, respect the constraints. And also uh, we penalize, uh, we, we give more higher penalizations to, to configurations that have uh, higher um, deviations from the, uh, from the constraints. And we report the average of 10 runs in the, our results. So um, I'm going to present only uh, one case, uh, one network, uh, GRNN, but we have the, the plots and the results for, for the three networks in, in our paper. Uh, and as, as we can see in this plot, uh, this initial part, these dashed lines, uh, this corresponds to the, the initial uh, sampling, initial bootstrapping, where we don't have the model. So we are sampling configurations at random. Uh, and then when this uh, dashed line ends, uh, the optimizers build the model and then they can start to recommend uh, optimal configuration. Uh, the goal here is to reduce the optimization cost and to increase the accuracy C. And if, as we can see in this plot, uh, we see that uh, both variants of trim tuner, so using GPs and DTs, different modeling techniques, the red line and blue line, they can, uh, in, in this network, they always recommend uh, better configurations with uh, higher accuracy uh, using uh, uh, smaller uh, costs. Uh, we have similar behaviors for, for the other two networks. Uh, and next, uh, I'm going to present a different perspective of the games. So here we, we consider the, the costs and the time to recommend the configuration that are close to the optimum uh, within a, a margin of uh, 5%. And we see in this first plot that the that trim tuner, the um, when, when we use decision trees, uh, can reduce the, the optimization cost by up to 50 times uh, with respect to the EIC and approximately 10 times when compared with the EIC per dollar. In the second uh, plot, uh, we see that uh, Trim Tuner can speed up the, the optimization process by up to uh, 65 times uh, when compared with EIC and 15 times uh, with respect to the EIC per dollar. In terms of the recommendation time, so the time that is needed to uh, retrain the models and compute the exition function and recommend and uh, select the configuration to test. Um, we see that the, the optimizers, uh, both Trim Tuner and Fabulous, that uh, uh, when, when GPs are, using, are used, uh, we see that 
uh, the the average recommendation time is is uh, large, so it takes a couple of minutes only to recommend one configuration, and this time tends to increase uh, as the the model is uh, is larger. Uh, if there are more configurations to to fit in the model, the GPs take more time to to train. However, we can tackle uh, this problem using a, an assemble of decision trees and we see that we can reduce the cost by up to approximately 30, uh, 13 times and as we as we saw in the previous plots uh, we do not lose uh, the any performance uh, in the system so the, the system is able to to recommend uh, feasible optimal configurations um, uh, both when GPs and BTs are used uh, while reducing the optimization cost. Uh, next, uh, I'm going to evaluate the efficiency of the filtering heuristic, the constraint expected accuracy, and we compare against uh, two state of the art black box optimizers, uh, namely direct and CMA ES, and a simple random approach. And uh, if we if we um, uh, look the, for the results, we see that uh, the constraint expected accuracy uh, reduces the recommendation cost by up to seven times uh, with respect to direct and uh, 3.6 times uh, with respect to CMAES. So using this, this uh, filtering heuristic, trim tuner uh, can reduce the optimization cost uh, in order to recommend a configuration with the, the same quality in terms of the accuracy, its accuracy. And if we look to, to the recommendation times using the different filtering heuristics, we see that uh, we, we, we do the C8, the use of the C8 does not have a, a a large impact, for example, when compared with the random approach. And we see that we, we can reduce the, the recommendation time um, using the CA instead of the other optimizers, the direct and CMA, yes, particularly uh, when uh, Gaussian processes are, are used. So uh, this, all this uh, work was present uh, last year. Uh, we are still working on this in order to to try to to solve uh, some some limitations and uh, particularly we are focused on the the time uh, that is needed to to compute the the exhibition function uh, so previously uh, we tackled this problem by proposing a new uh, a novel filtering heuristic in order to reduce the number of configurations to test in the exhibition function and also using a, an assemble of decision trees. Uh, but uh, we still see that it takes, uh, for example, uh, one and a half minute to, to recommend a configuration using DT. So uh, we, we try to tackle this problem and we see that uh, the computation of the exhibition functions based on the entropy search, uh, both Fabulous and Trim Tuner, are very expensive. And so we propose this new exhibition function that instead of computing the, the entropy search information gain, it tries to estimate the expected accuracy of the new predicted incumbent. So it tries to, to estimate the, the quality of the new incumbent and it multiplies by the probability that the new predicted incumbent meets the constraints and it's normalized by the cost. And uh, for that, in order to compute this acquisition function, we, we also need to simulate the models as in the previous uh, acquisition function uh, in order to, to try to estimate the impact uh, of evaluating a configuration excess. We are also uh, developing a new filtering heuristic. 
So uh, the filtering heuristic can be seen as a rough but cheap approximation of the excision function. And in, in the excision function, uh, we normalize by the cost in order to, to sample cheaper configurations. And therefore, we, we extend the constraint expected accuracy uh, and we propose the, this new one, the new filtering heuristic called constraint expected accuracy per unit cost that normalizes the expected uh, constraint expected accuracy uh, by the cost of testing a configuration. And uh, we see in the results um, that uh, uh, this way we can select cheaper configurations using smaller data sets and thus reducing the, the optimization cost. Uh, we have some preliminary, preliminary results. And here we can see, uh, for example, that the, the joint use of uh, the ex new excision function and new filtering heuristic, so the, the blue line, um, can reduce the optimization cost by up to uh, 5.6 times. And we see that uh, uh, can reduce this cost and still recommend uh, configurations with uh, feasible configurations with uh, uh, high accuracy. So at last, uh, I'm, I would like to point some final remarks. So I, I present TrimTuner, uh, a system that optimizes the machine learning model, the training of machine learning model in the cloud. Uh, and it tries to maximize the, the model accuracy subject to quality of service constraints. And uh, it, it exploits subsampling techniques in order to reduce the cost. And uh, as we saw, uh, TrimTuner uh, reduces the, the optimization cost by up to 50 times and speed up the, the exploration process by uh, 65 times uh, when compared with uh, a simple Bayesian optimization using constraint expected improvement that do not exploit uh, subsampling. Uh, in TrimTuner, uh, we also propose a novel excision function, the constraint expected accuracy and uh, a lightweighted predictive models based on the decision trees, on an assemble of decision trees, instead of the standard approach for Bayesian optimization, which is Gaussian processes. And the joint use of these two techniques uh, can reduce the recommendation for process by up to 117 times. So uh, all the code and data sets were made available for the community. Uh, you can check uh, both in this link. For more details uh, regarding the, um, the implementation or the related work or, or the, the results, please check our paper. Uh, and I, I finished my presentation. Um, I hope you, you enjoy it. Uh, and if you have any questions, please do not hesitate. Thank you. So, thank you, Pedro. Very interesting and very relevant presentation. Um, now, as Pedro said, we have some time for questions. If you want to ask a question, you can raise your hands um, uh, in the raise hand button, and I will then uh, unmute you. Um, so, are there any questions? Just raise your hands, and I will I will let you speak. Um, so I, I have a question. Um, you, you, you told us that uh, a very important part of it is, is the subsampling, right? So yes. um, how do you do this subsampling? So is it a, is it a random subsample? Uh, do you have um, some worries like uh, sampling with a given class, uh, uh, making sure that you balance the classes? Uh, so is this a random subsample or, or is it uh, a more careful uh, random sampling. Uh, so uh, when we are talking about uh, uh, subsample, uh, the idea is to, to reduce the, 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 the amount of data which the, with which the, the model is trained. So uh, we can talk about uh, reducing the training time uh, or in, in the data sets that we have, and we present, 
uh, we did a different thing that we reduced the, the amount of data uh, that uh, that we used to 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 train the models and in particular the we we deployed the, these three, three neural networks to train the the NMIST uh, and the train with the, the NMIST uh, database, data set, sorry. Right. Uh, and uh, the, the idea that we have to, 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 to reduce the, and to, to, to reduce the data is, is to, um, to have a, a probabilistic measure that uh, allow us to, to determine uh, the number of iterations that we need to do uh, in order to ensure that uh, uh, ninety percent, uh, ninety percent of the data set is is used to train in the train. So imagine that the, uh, in this case the NMIST data, data set has uh, sixty thousand images for training, if I'm not wrong. And uh, so we we use the different data set uh, sizes uh, that I show in here. Let me go there. Okay. So, okay, we use we use these three data set size, these five data set sizes. So we reduce to half, one quarter, ten percent, and sixty percent. And uh, we ensure that using, for example, half of the data set, we ensure and we calculate the number of iterations that we need to do in order to 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 use. 90% of the images in the data set. And for that, we have a function that is dependent of the, for example, the batch size, that is the, the quantity, the number of images to, to, to train in each iteration. Uh, so it was not completely at random. Uh, we, we tried to, 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 to come up with an heuristic that would allow us to to use uh, uh, a high percentage of the data set. Sure, sure. Thank you. That, that makes sense. Um, I, I have another question. So, for example, um, when you're using the, the ensemble of, of classifiers, for example, when you use a, a, an ensemble of decision trees, um, does the number of, of decision trees that you consider have a, a large impact? So, how do you do you did you tune? This, this hyperparameter, which is the, the number of decision trees that you used. And is it easy to find a, a number of decision trees that performs uh, well across several tasks? Mm -hmm. So uh, when we use these modeling techniques, we have an additional problem because we need to, to also tune the hyperparameters of, of the, the own tuner, yeah, right? Of the, yes. modeling, uh, <laughs> of the model use. So if we, if we use uh, Gaussian processes, we need to, to select the kernel, for example. And uh, also, uh, when we are using a, a decision trees, um, we, we have the, the own hyperparameters of decision trees. One of them is the, the number of learners, yes. Uh, we, we try several, um, we, and we did uh, several experiments varying the, the number of uh, trees in the assemble. For example, we start with 10 and then 30 and 50. I, I, I know that this is not a, a huge number of, um, of uh, learners. Uh, I, I have seen some examples where uh, some people are using uh, hundreds or thousands of learners in an assemble. But uh, this way, we could have a, a good model without uh, compromise the, the training time. The, the time required to, to, to train the, the ensemble. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. So um, if anyone has any further questions, you can also ask the questions through the, through the chat, uh, if you prefer. Um, so, oh, we have a raised hand. I think you can talk, Miguel. Thank you. And thank you, Pedro, for the presentation. I have both a, a, a question and, and a suggestion. 
as, as you explained well, uh, a big problem in, in machine learning is the very huge size of this model. And for example, you talked about the transformer models in your in that slide. I, I think it's very uh, ex explain, explanative about the cost of, of, of these modules, so, such as BERT and GPT. If you, if, you, if you can go back so that people uh, take a look again at the sheer size of, of these models. And um, uh, one interesting approach we see nowadays in reducing the impact of these models, especially in inference, is um, quantizing the models and pruning. So we're talking about huge neural networks and we reduce the size of, 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 of the network, for example, by reducing weight, by pruning weights or by quantizing the, um, the computations. And I think this is also an interesting parameter for exploring when, when you're exploring that space to also have this quantization and, uh, and uh, pruning parameters, for, for example, the percentage of the model that is pruned. And my question is if this, this kind of, uh, of exploration um, dimension, of new dimension, if it's easy to integrate into your work if it's easy to explore also this type of perimeter? Uh, yes. So um, we, we did not explore any uh, uh, additional parameters, for example, the, the architecture of the neural network. Uh, but I, I think in my opinion, this can be easily integrated in, in TrimTuner because the only thing that we need to do is extend the the search space. So you have an additional dimension to the search space that corresponds to the new parameter to optimize. And uh, this way, the, the system, uh, it's going to be able to, to optimize that parameter too. But as I, as I said uh, during the presentation, if you increase the, the search space and the, the search space is given by the, the cardinality of the product uh, of the number of five parameters times the number of uh, cloud parameters. Uh, so if you, if you increase the, the number of dimensions, you have uh, larger search spaces and uh, it grows, these large, uh, these search spaces grows exponentially and uh, you can have huge uh, search spaces that are, are difficult to very, very difficult to, to optimize. So it will be, maybe it will be more difficult to recommend the, the optimal and configuration to find the, the, the optimal, the optimal. But uh, I would say that the system would be easily extend to, and can be easily extend uh, to, to incorporate uh, that. Okay, thank you for your answer. Thank you. We have another question, um, Paolo, I think you can, yes. Yes, I'm actually the advisor of Pedro, so my question is not to Pedro, it is uh, to you guys out there as possibly customers of this kind of user. <laughs> I was wondering whether you have uh, you're facing the kind of problems. I guess you are, but I wanted to hear a bit more about your side of the story as a company is working on, you know, the daily training large models, etc. How do you, how do you face whether you are facing these problems and what's your approach today? Also, in view of possible potential collaborations to try to, for instance, use some of the tricks that you are working on with Pedro on some realistic data sets. This is always something that for us researchers is very interesting, right? To be able to apply them to real case. Sure, so if, if anyone wants to, to, to participate, please um, raise your hands. Um, I can talk a bit on my personal experience and in my, my usual uh, work, Th this would be really, really useful. Because of course, a, a big part of, of um, what I do, I work mainly in NLP um, and I use uh, several uh, large models. And even when I'm working with the lighter models, um, hyperparameter optimization is, is quite, quite a hassle. Um, so absolutely speeding up uh, this, this kind of, of work would be, would be, 
would be great. So I hope that more more things come uh, from from this work and that um, more works can uh, move in this direction, for sure. So I don't know if if uh, anyone else wants to to add something. Um, okay, that that's nice. Maybe uh, you can take a look at the GitHub, or maybe Pedro can help you guys in uh, trying out and integrating sure. our tools with the with your training tool tool chain. Right now, as Pedro mentioned, we are not looking at the, model optimization in, in uh, architectural search or changing the models that is also something that we plan to do and i guess that out there data scientists are actually constantly playing both with the model structure and their hyperparameters so this is also something that would be interesting for us to look at uh, and we are looking for opportunities for collaboration with the companies of course okay okay i'll i'll, I'll keep an eye out uh, and i'll i'll say something is if we if we if we think it's it's appropriate now, um, sure. <laughs> thank you. Um, so I think this is it. Um, once again, thank you, Pedro. Uh, very interesting topic. Um, this is it for today. Thank you all for for being here. We will be back in two weeks at the same time, Thursday, one p.m. So thank you all uh, again and uh, goodbye.